Here I've got a nice problem involving a recursively defined sequence and perfect squares. So let's see what we've got. We want to define the following sequence, well, like I alluded to recursively. So a0 will be equal to a, which is an integer. And then a n plus 1 will be 4 times a n plus minus 1 to the n. And this is going to be for all n bigger than or equal to 0. So we take care of the value of a0 with this seed. And then we produce all of the rest of the values for our sequence from this recursion. And our goal is to find an integer a, or maybe find all integers a, that maximize the number of perfect squares in this list. Okay, I think this is a pretty interesting statement. Let's get into the solution. And we're gonna use a couple of my favorite tricks here. We'll first find a closed form for this sequence using generating functions. And then we'll use the notion of quadratic residues at the end. So let's see what this generating function will look like. So I'm gonna define a function which I will call capital A of X to be the sum as N goes from zero up to infinity of A sub N X to the N. Next, I'll take out the first term or maybe I should say the zeroth term so that I can apply the recursion to the rest of the terms. So if I take out the zeroth term, I have a zero, but notice that a zero is equal to a times x to the zero, which is one, plus the sum as n goes from one up to infinity of a sub n x to the n. So all I've done here is taken out the zeroth term. Next, I'd like to re-index this thing so that it has an n plus one in the subscript and I can easily apply this recursion. So what re-indexing will make that happen? Well, I will send n to n plus one, but that means I will start at n equals zero instead of one, because when n plus one is one, n is equal to zero. Okay, so let's see what I've got. I've got a plus this sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of a sub n plus one times x to the n plus one. But I'm gonna take one of those multipliers of x and factor it out here. And now I'll apply the recursion to this a sub n plus one. That'll leave me with a plus x times the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of all of this stuff. So that's gonna be four a n plus minus one to the n, and that's all multiplied into x to the n. Just to reiterate what happened here, I applied my recursion to this a sub n plus one term in order to write it as four a n plus minus one to the n. Next, I'll rip this apart into two pieces. So that's gonna give me um, as n goes from zero to infinity of a n x to the n. Okay, so that takes care of this four a n x to the n. And then I also have a minus one to the n x to the n. So for that, I'll have plus x times the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one times or to the n x to the n. But let's see what we've got here. This guy right here is exactly our original generating function. So that's good. We've created a functional equation for our original generating function. And then this guy over here is just a geometric series. So notice that's a geometric series where the common ratio is minus x. And the starting term is one. Or maybe if you were to multiply this x through, the starting term would be x. So let's summarize that with the following line. We have this is equal to a plus four times x times a of x plus x over one plus x, using just our standard geometric series summing formula. Okay, so let's look at the extreme left and right hand side of what we have built. And notice we can use this to easily solve for a of x. So let's see what we'll get when we do that. So we'll have a of x times one minus four x, so that's what I get from moving all of this over to the left-hand side and then factoring an a of x out equals a plus x over one plus x. Okay, well I can just divide by this one minus four x. 
And that leaves me with a of x is equal to a over 1 minus 4x plus x over 1 plus x times 1 minus 4x. Now I have this nice rational function expression for my generating function for my sequence a sub n. And on the next board, we will re-expand that so that we can get a nice closed form for our sequence. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, on the last board, we did the following calculation. We set our generating function for our sequence a n was equal to a of x, and we had the following nice rational function version of this generating function. And from here, we would like to re-expand this using geometric series tricks so that we have a closed form. But in order to do that, I'm going to need to do a partial fraction decomposition on this second term because I have a reducible quadratic polynomial in the denominator. So I can take this x over 1 plus x times 1 minus 4x and write it as, let's say, b over 1 plus x plus c over 1 minus 4x. And then it's just a matter of building a system of equations in order to calculate b and c. So this is a fairly standard trick from like a calculus class or maybe even like a pre-calculus type class can decode what b and c are out of this calculation that we've made. It looks like b is equal to negative one-fifth and c is equal to one-fifth. And then we pick up this 5a here from just giving this thing a common denominator. Okay, so that's good to see. Now we can take each of these and re-expand them as geometric series. So if we take the view of this being a constant over 1 minus 4x, we see that's a geometric series where common ratio is 4x. And likewise, this is a geometric series where the common ratio is negative x, just like it was before. So that's going to give us 5a plus 1 over 5 times the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of 4nx to the n. So that's that first one expanded. And then we will have minus 1 over 5, the sum, as n goes from 0 up to infinity of minus 1 to the n, x to the n. And now we would probably like to put this back together, and that's exactly what we'll do. So we'll have the sum, as n goes from 0 up to infinity, of, let's see, it'll be 5a plus 1 times 4 to the n, minus negative 1 to the n, all over 5 times x to the n. So something like that. But we have two equal power series. That means all their coefficients are equal. In particular, a sub n will be equal to this kind of complicated object right here. So now we've got a closed form for a sub n. Let's write the closed form at the top of the next board, and then we're ready to finish this off. We just got a nice closed form for our sequence. I've rewritten it a little bit, but this is what we have. We have a sub n is a times four to the n plus four to the n minus negative one to the n over five. Now, since we're making this recursion out of integers, we know each of these guys is an integer, but this looks like it could be a rational number, but in fact, it's an integer. So a corollary to all of this calculation is that this four to the n minus negative one to the n is a multiple of five. Obviously, there's probably a much easier way to prove that fact, but it actually jumps out from these calculations that we've made so far, given the fact that all of these numbers are obviously integers. So now let's get ready to finish this off. And we'll do this by reducing mod eight and using the fact that only a couple of different numbers are perfect squares mod 8. Let's make that calculation. So let's maybe look at m, and then we'll look at m squared reduced modulo 8. And you might say, well, why mod 8? Well, maybe the first choice would be mod 4, because we've got all of these 4s here, and those will disappear when we reduce mod 4 but you'll see that that will not provide a lot of interesting information. Working mod eight will work as long as n is bigger than or equal to two, because then these four to the n's will also be a multiple of eight and they'll disappear. Okay, so suffice it to say, this calculation will help quite a bit. So here, let's take our values of m to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
I guess we could also take zero, but zero squared is zero, so that's pretty obvious. And then one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, but nine is the same thing as one mod eight. Four squared is 16, that's zero mod eight. Five squared is 25, which is one mod eight. Six squared is 36, which is four mod eight. Seven squared, which is 49, is one mod eight. Okay, so from this chart, we see that the only perfect squares mod eight are zero, one, and four. That's gonna be extremely helpful as we finish this off. So now let's take this and reduce modulo eight for n bigger than or equal to two. So that means we're gonna to have to look at the cases when n is equal to zero and one separately. You might say, well, let's just reiterate why n needs to be bigger than or equal to two, because that means that four to the n will be congruent to zero mod eight, and that'll give us a really nice simplification there. So here we have a sub n will be congruent to negative, negative one to the n over five mod eight. Because this guy right here disappears, this guy right here disappears because n is bigger than or equal to two. Now this might look a little bit slippery because we have something in the denominator, but we can view this thing in the denominator as being the modular inverse of five. So in other words, we're looking for five inverse mod eight. But five inverse mod eight is the same thing as five mod eight. That's because five times five is one mod eight. Five is its own inverse. So that allows us to essentially bring this five up to the numerator. So that's gonna give, this is congruent to plus minus five mod eight. Obviously, we've got some sort of feel if it's positive or negative, given the value of n, but we're actually not gonna need it for our argument. Okay, so what's negative five mod eight? Well, that's three. So here we get a n is congruent to three or five mod eight. But then by our list over here, we see that three and five are never perfect squares mod eight. So never squares. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that a n for n bigger than or equal to two is never a square. So let's look over here at our goal. Our goal is to maximize the number of perfect squares in this list. But we've just shown that everything in this direction is never a perfect square. So it's only possible for a naught and a one to be a perfect square. And now let's look at each of those individually. We're almost done. So far we've proven that for all n bigger than or equal to two, a sub n is not a square. So that leaves us with the final question. Can we pick an integer a such that a naught and a one are both squares? Well, let's recall that we need a naught to be equal to a in the first place. So in order for a naught to be a square, a has to be a square. So we might wanna set this equal to m squared. And now we can apply the recursion. So notice that a one will be equal to four times a naught, which is m squared plus negative one to the zero, which is one. So we've got four m squared plus one. But now since we want a one to be a perfect square, let's maybe set this equal to k squared. But now looking at this equation that we've just built, we will see that something is fishy very, very quickly. We can rewrite this to say that k squared minus two m squared is equal to one and then factor the left-hand side. So that's gonna give us k minus 2m times k plus 2m is equal to one. But now since the product of these two numbers is equal to one, we really have three cases. We have the case when they're both equal to one, but that means that two, but that means that m is equal to zero and k is equal to one, which tells us that a zero is zero and a one is one. The next case is one equals one and one equals negative one, but we'll see that this does not give us a solution. So I'll let you guys check the details, but it's pretty easy to see that that does not give a solution. 
And then furthermore, if they're both equal to negative one, we'll see that that will lead to m equals zero and k equals negative one. That gives us the same solution that we had right here because a one is equal to k squared. So negative one squared is one. And that's a good place to stop.